Hey guys, if like all sensible photographers you shoot raw photos, then there are two parts to the photographic process, taking a photo and then processing it. So finding a photo editor you're comfortable with is as crucial a part of the process as getting a camera that works the way you like. Back in the day, photographers used Adobe Photoshop because it was the only game in town. But these days, there are a huge number of options in photo editing apps catering to all skill levels and price points. Affinity Photo has been attracting a lot of interest over the last couple of years because Serif, the company that produce it, have so far resisted the temptation to shift to a subscription model. It's a well-liked bit of software with a strong user base. It's also competitively priced at just 70 US, 41 at the moment, or 100 Australian, 65 at the moment. Does that mean that Affinity Photo is a recommended purchase for photographers? It's not that simple. Affinity Photo is a feature-packed photo editor that has a lot going for it, and there's been a great deal of hype surrounding that 2.0 point release. Having paid my money for it in the end-of-year sales, I've been testing it since that point release. I wanted to use the software properly before reviewing it, and now that I have, I've got a few things to say about it. The old TLDR is that while Affinity Photo 2 has useful and innovative features, it is a complex app that's let down by a weird interface, inconsistencies, and issues with basic functionality. All right, let's dig into it. Now, the first big problem is, I believe, due to Serif's clear aim to differentiate their app from software like Photoshop. For instance, there's the various modes that the app can work in. Rather than calling these modes modes, Serif called them personas. Why? What's wrong with develop mode and photo mode? It's a weird choice and one that I reckon serves only to confuse the user. Then there's the personas themselves. The develop persona is the app's raw editor, but there's no obvious reference to that. The first time I used Affinity Photo, I couldn't for the life of me work out what the difference between the develop and photo personas was. They both do similar things, just in slightly different ways, it seemed to me. Once I realized that develop was the same kind of non-destructive raw editing tools you get in something like Lightroom, I then better understood understood the workflow in the app. But I have other questions about these modes. For instance, why are the personas in such a strange order? If you're editing a raw file, the first thing you're going to do is use those non-destructive raw edits which you find in the developed persona. So why is it in the middle? Surely it would make sense to have some left to right workflow going on here, but no, it's stuck in the middle. So you do your raw edits with your saturation and your vibrance and all the rest of it, tweak the white balance, do the shadow and the highlights and all that kind of jazz. And then when you're happy with how the photo looks, you click this develop button and you go to the first item in the list. Makes no sense to me at all. Just as the team at Serif have sought to differentiate themselves from the competition with weird sounding mode names, so they've also let the art team run riot with the interface. The icons in Affinity Photo 2 are not an improvement on those found in the first release, and in some cases are downright bizarre. The red eye removal tool looks like a pierced nipple. The white balance tool looks like a small planet. The dodge brush looks like a butt plug. The healing brush looks like a turkey baster. And the smudge brush tool looks like a turd colored jellyfish. Icons are supposed to be simple and uh, iconic. You're supposed to be able to flick your eyes over to the toolbar 
and instantly spot the tool you require. In Affinity Photo 2, hunting for the right tool feels like playing Mahjong. You can set those icons to black and white in the preferences, but then they become even harder to differentiate from one another. The weird interface choices continue in the photo persona. So here we are in the photo persona, which is the kind of, I guess, the Photoshop equivalent in Affinity Photo. And we've got all these adjustments. Now, when the, when I first loaded the application, none of these were on the screen. I had to open them myself from this window panel, and then I docked them to the side of the screen. So good so far. So let's say I want to do some levels adjustments on this. Now, I open this up, and I was thinking, OK, default, dark, and enlightened. What if I want more granular control over the levels? Not immediately obvious at all that you can, in fact, fully tweak the levels in the usual way the first time you open the light up. So let me just click on default and I'll show you what happens. So we have this floating uh, window here and I don't understand why this isn't incorporated into the sidebars, why it has to sit on top of everything. It's usually in the wrong place and you have to move it around the screen. Why can I not just dock this to the sides of the screen? doesn't make any sense at all. Why not embed it in the side panel or let me dock these windows so that I can make these adjustments? There are so many odd choices and inconsistencies in Affinity Photo 2 that it started to irritate the crap out of me. For instance, in the raw editing develop persona, I couldn't understand why I could tweak the black point but not the white point. And then I realized they'd gone and rebranded the white point slider as brightness. No doubt Serif will tell me that this is because everyone else has been doing it wrong all along. And the white point adjustment in Lightroom is actually a brightness adjustment. But if that is the case, why isn't the black point slider labeled as the darkness slider? Hmm? Frustratingly, if you then edit your photos levels in the photo persona, you'll find that it refers to black and white levels. Which one is it, Serif? Also, in the enhanced slider group, why does the midpoint of the saturation slider sit over on the right when contrast, clarity and vibrance are all in the middle? Weird pictographic icons and interface inconsistencies aside, the sliders themselves are good, well spaced out, clear and easy to use. You can also resize the panels to stretch those sliders out further if you've got the screen real estate to play with. I do like the inclusion of a scope alongside a histogram, but I'm not sure whether it's my 2019 iMac or the software that's the bottleneck, but the scopes lag badly behind any changes that you make to the image. This makes them much less useful as you have to wait a second to see any changes ripple through to the scope. And apart from the strangely inconsistent interface, I have some issues with the basic functionality of Affinity Photo 2. Without doubt, the two most important basic sliders in a raw editor are shadows, and highlights, because they are at the very core of the raw photo workflow. Dropping the highlights and lifting the shadows is literally the first thing I do on 99.9% .9 of my photos, and I very much doubt I'm alone. When I use these sliders on a raw image in Affinity Photo 2, the results are weirdly washed out. I wasn't aiming for a drastic alteration of shadows and highlights, but the effects of affinity sliders were barely noticeable. I did a comparison between these sliders in Lightroom and Affinity, and the difference is like night and day. Lightroom retained vibrancy and saturation levels, but Affinity made the image look all washed out, like it crushed the blacks or dropped a low opacity black layer over the top of the whole image. 
I found the saturation and vibrant sliders to be similarly feeble. The vibrant slider didn't appear to do much more than add an apologetic smear of colour to the image, while the saturation slider had all the intensity of a politician's apology. White balance is similarly anemic and useless. Why is the neutral colour picker not with the sliders? Why is there no auto white balance in the raw editing develop persona? Why can't I select from the default raw or white balance options such as as shot or cloudy so many questions the weird thing about affinity photo 2 is that in many areas it offers far more technical complexity than other photo editors if you click on the options icon in the photo persona white balance tool you get this blend options window there's no reference at all to this in the user manual but after watching some youtube videos i learned that it's used to target specific light ranges for the adjustment on the layers below it once you start digging into the feature set of affinity photo 2 it becomes clear that there are highly complex photo editing tools available within it The HDR editing, for instance, enables you to work in EDR mode. If you have an HDR-capable monitor, as many Mac owners do, then you can view your image in HDR with the extended dynamic range as you work on it. The HDR merge tool is great, and being able to work on your image in 32-bit EDR mode is useful because you can save your image out in an HDR file format such as JPEG XL to output a traditional HDR image, you use the tone mapping persona to merge your images. And I know this is going to sound a bit nonsensical, but bear with me. I found it really hard to create images that didn't have that HDR look about them in the tone mapping persona. What I mean by that is that awful over-processed HDR look, that classic over-illuminated contrasty image that just looks completely unnatural. The Trey Ratcliffe look, if you will. The tone compression and local contrast sliders in the tone mapping persona did go some way to fixing that HDR look, but then I ended up with something I could have achieved with a single exposure. Basically, it took a lot of fiddling to find the settings that work for me, much more mucking about than it takes in pretty much any of my other HDR enabled apps. Affinity Photo 2 has a full brace of stacking modes alongside HDR, including focus and astrophotography. The astrophotography module in particular is a fully developed processing suite for full-blown astro shots with light, dark, bias and flat frame sequences. There's one feature built into Affinity Photo that you won't find in any other photo editor to my knowledge and that's the live projection mode for 360 degree panos. What this means is that you can edit your pano viewed as a 360 rather than one of those weird flat merged shots. Let me show you what I mean. This is actually the reason I bought Affinity Photo version 1 originally. It's a really cool facility, quite specific one, uh, and it enables you to edit 360 images much more easily. This is a drone shot, obviously, that I took with my Mavic 2 Pro. You can see it's a 360 because of its distorted bottom edges here, you know, because it, it map around a globe. And editing these is normally a pain in the ass. But in this software, we can go to this live projection mode and enable the equi rectangular projection then we can make some changes let's say for instance i wanted to stick a curves adjustment on this maybe bring up the shadow slightly drop the highlights very slightly maybe a little bit more and then when we're happy with it we can then go back to the light projection on the background layer and go to edit light projection which drops us back into that interactive kind of scroll around flick around mode and we can see what difference the curves adjustment has made to the shot that's pretty neat right There are all sorts of extremely complex features built into Affinity Photo 2 that match or exceed those that you find in Photoshop. If Affinity Photo 2 represents anything, it's an embrace of the highly technical side of photography. And when I say embrace, 
I mean whining, dining, shared taxi home, messy sex, twice, mutually satisfying orgasms and no arguing over the wet patch. Fenny Photo 2 makes no effort to disguise its complex interior. In fact, it revels in it. So if you're a geeky photographer who loves nothing more than indulging in highly technical post-processing with advanced masking and 50 or more layers of tweaks, then you'll bloody love it, mate. The problem is that at the price point serif are charging, they will undoubtedly attract the less serious photographer who just wants to process a photo or two. And in that regard, it's nowhere near as good as something like Luminar Neo. There is also absent functionality in Affinity Photo 2 that you might miss. There is no photo management whatsoever. In this sense, it's exactly like Photoshop, an app that you open individual shots in, but which requires a second app to manage the old photo library. No photo management isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's worth knowing about. Serif have also made a point of including no AI or machine learning tools in their software whatsoever. I suspect it's almost like a point of pride to them that every single tool in here requires an actual human operator. With tools like the luminosity mask, which enables you to select areas of a photograph by their specific light intensity, you can undoubtedly get as granular as something like Photoshop, but it takes a lot longer. The whole point of AI masks, as far as I'm concerned is that it simply speeds things up. I can create a sky mask in Photoshop in half a second and easily and simply finesse it if I want. I can go old school too if I prefer, but at least Adobe gives me the option. All things considered, Affinity Photo 2 is a bit of a mess. It's a highly technical bit of software positioned at the budget end of the photo editor market. Its interface and design are confusing and inconsistent, and its raw editing functionality is weird, obtuse, and it produced results that I just wasn't happy with. And I should point out, I'm no photo editing newbie. I've been using Photoshop since 2.5 back in 1992 when we edited by means of chops or channel operations. I'm prepared to get my hands dirty, but not just because I've got a few hours to kill. I suspect that many people who purchase this software will do so for one or other of its unique features, not because it's a well-rounded photo editor. For me, that standout feature is that live projection mode, but for someone else, it might be astrophotography stacking. Someone else might like that 32-bit EDR editing mode. And if those individual tools are of use to you, then the surprisingly low price tag of this app is well worth it. But if you're just a hobbyist photographer who's looking for something to quickly and easily kick their raw photos into shape, then Affinity Photo 2 is not for you. If you can afford the Adobe Photography Bundle, then that would be my recommendation. But if you want a simple, fast and fun photo editor, I'd get Luminar Neo. Pixelmate, a Pro and On One Photo Raw are also great options. Affinity Photo 2 might not be the only subscription-free photo editor on the market, but it's certainly the bloody weirdest. And that'll do us for this review of Affinity Photo 2. Did you buy it during the old end of year sale? Are you a version one owner like me who paid again? I'm always happy to support developers that produce good software, but we need to be honest about the kind of customers who will get value from it. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. If you got value from me video, please give it a like and consider subscribing for more honest reviews of drone and photography related products. Till the next time guys, ta-ta and Happy New Year.